Hi everyone, um, I wanted to just go over the new workflow um, Autodesk have introduced for um, files between Inventor and Fusion 360. So if you've been an Inventor user for a long time and now you've discovered that you've got Fusion 360 within your product design and manufacturing collection, you might want to venture into some of the workflows that Fusion 360 have to offer. So how do you get your files from Inventor into Fusion? So Autodesk did have a solution before 2022 but the new solution seems to be a bit more seamless and also just to make you aware that you do still need to have the desktop connector to make this workflow work. Okay, So if you're wanting to connect between Inventor and Fusion 360 or you want to connect between Vault Professional and Fusion Team then you would use the desktop connector to do that and that can be downloaded from your online account um, via Fusion. I'll point that out when we go inside the application. So let's start off inside Inventor first of all. Um, we're just going to create a new part um, just to give you an idea of how the workflow all comes together. So whenever you create a new part, um, if we go for just a plain old box as I always do. <laughs> um, so what we can do is, you know, we can add some features specifically to the box, we can save it and as we save it, you know, we're saving this into a specific project. Um, we'll just call it 25 by 25 by 25. Um, and then what we can do from here is we can actually use this new feature that Autodesk has provided with an Inventor 2022. So we go up to the environments, we've got this option here which is send to fusion. So when we select the send to fusion dialog box, what happens is um, if you haven't used the sequence before, you might actually see a different kind of a window open up for a first time user. Um, but after you pass through that stage where you want to open it up inside Fusion, um, you get to this window here which you know, suggests where do you want to send that Fusion 360 file. So at the top here I've got access to all of my teams. So any team that you're part of, you, you, know, you can control what team it goes to and then within that team what, what folder structure do you want that file to be in. Um, so what project do you want that, that to fall into. So I'm going to put it into my um, my working files but if I just change it to something else you can see how it gives you the folder structure for selection so we can see if I go to working files I might want to actually just put it into my inventor underscore fusion workflow folder um, and then at the bottom here it gives it the name and then asks you what you want to do so you want to upload the new file so if we click on upload it goes through a, pro a process of progression um, where it publishes it into your folder um, and just to make you aware as well, if I now go to my Fusion 360 um, hub um, as well within the desktop connector and I've got access to my working files, I can see that that file exists in there with my other Fusion documents. Um, so it, it will be saved in your Fusion 360 drive as well, which is connected through the desktop connector. So. After you've done that process, um, you would then go through a phase of you know, opening it inside Fusion. So if you don't have Fusion open, um, it will go through a process of you know, opening up the application on your machine and then you know, give you access to the data panel where that file resides. So once Fusion opens, you can see that you've got your data panel down the left hand side. Um, it's telling me just now it's still preparing, so I'm just going to give it an extra minute. And we can see it opens up the file directly. On the left hand side we can go into our working folder and we can see that we've got access to our IPT file there. Um, down at the bottom of the screen it clarifies that the component is, is within um, our new design. Um, so if we go ahead and then we do a bit of a change to the file, let's see how that workflow actually works. So we can go to our 3D model and if we add some features, very basic features um, from the inventor side 
and we do a save to the file. And then if we do the same thing again, if we go up to environments and click on send to fusion, it already knows that this file already exists. So down at the bottom here on our screen, we can see a bit of a warning that says, do you know the file with the same name already exists in this location? The new version will be uploaded to Fusion Team. Do you want to upload the new version? And you would say, yeah, so upload new version. And then again, we go through that process where you can again, open it up inside Fusion 360. And then if we go through a process of just updating, refreshing the data panel, as well as you can see at the top of the screen here that we've got this, this um, symbol that we should be aware of if we've if we've used it in the past. Um, so if you've used Fusion 360 in the past, you'll see, do you know that the files actually, it's opened it in two locations. It's actually opened it again for you. Um, but we can see here, do you know this one's undone where we could just select it. If we had chosen not to open it directly, it wouldn't have opened up another file. Um, it would have just kept the other one open and showing you that it needed updated. So, do you know, there's two kind of ways that you can do it. You can either keep it open inside Fusion and continue to work with it and update the link. Do you know, so we can do something like if we go back and just add another hole into this face as well, just to see the process again, where this time we see environments, send to Fusion, um, we can upload the new version. And when we get to the stage where it asks us to open it inside Fusion, we can just close that and go back to a Fusion app we can see that it's updated, it's given us the warning and we can go pro through a process of refreshing the file and um, it will update for us and, so and show us that you know we've added that extra feature from the Inventor application through into Fusion. And then we can see now it's added the two holes that we've we've specified from the Inventor application. So just before we go any further guys, I want to show you how to get access to download and install the desktop connector. So in your data panel, you've got access to your um, open in the web. So we can select that icon and what it will do for us is take us directly to our Fusion Team environment where we can see and gain access to our files um, through the web browser. So what we can do here is on the top right hand corner we'll have access to our own preferences um, and in that list at the very bottom you'll see install the desktop connector for Fusion. So when you select that you can download and install it onto your uh, laptop or desktop um, and then from there you'll see after you've installed it we've got this small icon which will run in the background if you wish which connects up your um, Autodesk desktop connector for the workflow that I've just kind of a, um, started showing. So from there we can see that we've got access from our PC to our Fusion 360 using the desktop connector. So also just to give you an idea if we do it the other way guys, the, the process if you've ever used Fusion to invent our, it's the exact same process. Um, so if we, we've got a Fusion file here that we can open up inside Inventor, so that process isn't really changed. If we say file open, you know, we can still get access to our parts um, which are on our drive. So we can go Fusion 360 or Fusion Team Drive um, where we can go working files, Inventor Fusion workflow and we can see all files and then we've got access to our Fusion files when we open them we still get that AnyCAD functionality that we did in the past. So that kind of interoperability is still there um, in the same way as it was before. Nothing's changed. Um, and when it opens up inside the application, you know, you get the option for reference or convert. So if we use reference model, we can load in the model. Um, and again, it gives us that um, box next to the name in the browser, which tells us that, you know, it's a, an any kind of file which is connected to the cloud and if we go into Fusion and open up our design inside Fusion, you know, we can add our, um, our features to that file and do a save um, to our cloud space and again go back to Inventor where we can right click and check for any updates that have been added to the file 
um, and we can update those and again we watch the progression updating very similar to what we did in the past okay so the whole idea about this guys is, is a, a bit of an interconnectability to you know other members of your team do you know if you're in manufacturing if you're using inventor but you've got guys who are using fusion and um, if you've got other departments you've got um other teams that are using fusion for very specific reasons and you want to pass over data to and from them then do you know the the desktop connector is going to you know aid you to do that the other thing is you know things like generative design let's say for instance you know you're really interested in it but you you don't have the time to redesign again inside Fusion, then this is this is going to help you out significantly uh, by bringing over the files from Inventor and or Fusion to this environment. So it was just to give you an idea, guys, how it's how it's all put together by by Autodesk. I think this workflow is only going to continue to to get stronger in the future. Um, I hope that you're using this workflow and taking the time to venture into Fusion because Autodesk are spending a lot of time developing the product just now. So I just wanted to give you a bit of insight about what's new and the uh, the whole uh, interconnectability between the two products. Uh, so thanks for watching guys. If you've got any questions, um, don't hesitate to contact me directly. Thank you.